Hey everyone, how you doing? So, I'm gonna go over some supplies for making collagraph plates. Alright, starting off here, um, I've just got some cardboard. We're gonna use this for actually the main structure. Um, though we could actually use cardboard for building up the surface too. And I've got some regular cardboard as well, and I really like that you can actually get some cool textures if you peel up uh, some of these top layers as well. Um, so it's not as good to use as a structural base uh, like the flat cardboard is, or again, you could also be using chipboard too. Um, but this does have a nice texture because of the ribbing in there. I've also got some mesh. This is from... Um, some garlic, but you know what what apples or onions come in. Uh, this works really nice for some good textures. I've also got some string. Uh, this is just some butcher's string, uh, but any string you have will work really well. Um, again, uh, we're just talking about raising that surface up. Um, this is, again, really nice for making lines, too. Um, or, well, you'll see. We'll have some fun with this. I've also got some different kinds of tapes. Um, the blue mask tapes are really good if you need to tape some down some paper later on when we're making our frittage prints. Um, but otherwise, just masking tape. And again, I have some really thin tape here too. This is going to be a nice way to make lines and make different sort of values uh, within the frittage. So it's good to have some tapes. Although they're technically part of, you know, adhesives, um, you know, we're going to be using this to build up the surface. Some other random things I've found around. I got some um, some tin foil here. Uh, we'll crinkle this up. This is gonna make some nice um, nice shapes. Uh, again, we can move it around, mold it around quite a bit. Um, I've got some of this textured uh, paper. I don't know what it's from. I just got some again random things lying around here. That I'm gonna try out. And I've also got some sandpaper too. Again, this is again. Uh, really much like intaglio in, in the fact that the more textured something is, the more um, material it'll hold. Uh, so I've just got some 220 grit here. Again, any grit will work really well. Um, if you go too fine, though, it might not hold as well. All right, so these are some of the things we're going to use to build some collagraph plates out of. All right, folks, you're going to need some cutting and shaping tools. Um, right off the bat, it's nice to have a cutting mat. Um, I just have this little 12 by 18 here for myself, though if you don't have one, you can use the back of a sketchbook um, or just some cardboard you have lying around. I know we're all getting a lot of boxes and shipping packages right now. Um, you're going to need some rulers, some things to just measure with, um, as well as just some straight edges. If you don't have a ruler, this is just a piece of paper. I fold it in half a couple times and then this creased edge here gives me just a nice straight edge to draw along um, or to follow along with. Um, scissors, hopefully most of you have. Um, a box cutter, just a razor, an exacto knife, you know, another little small box cutter here. Whatever you folks have around um, will be great to use for this. But you do want to have um, just a couple different cutting measuring tools as well as a nice surface to cut and assemble on. And this cutting mat will be really useful in the future when we get into actual printing or what we're going to be doing is printing. Alright, and you're going to need some adhesives as well. Um, plain old Elmer's glue is great. I got some glue sticks lying around as well. Um, this is just some other um, glue for foam, but anything to just help stick things to the surface of your collagraph plate. Um, again, even even hot glue is nice. Um, you can even use hot, tool, hot glue as a drawing tool as well, uh, because it can make a bead of glue. Um, you know, that can be a raised surface uh, that we frittage off of. So this can be a, a gluing apparatus as well as a drawing apparatus too. All right, so where to start? Well, um, as I mentioned in our handout, you want to start with a sketch. 
Um, and I said a master sketch. That's because we're going to base all of our plates for this off of this one drawing. Um, as you can see here, I just did a very quick sketch um, of the cinder block that sunk into the ground that I found lying around here, just off the top of my head. Um, and I, you know, I used some crayons that I had lying around just to give me an idea of where the color is going to be. Um, so this is going to be uh, my three plates. I'm going to make a plate that is for the cinder block, um, the ground here, as well as the background. Um, I might end up doing the background and the gray of the cinder block on the same plate and then using um, one plate here just for all the kind of sort of key line drawing area here. Um, but you can see I have measured out this is going to be six inches by six inches. Um, I have it on some nice tracing paper here that we can work off of. Well, I guess newsprint here. But um, again, I'm going to base all of my plates off of this. All right. Alright folks, so I'm going to transfer my drawing onto uh, my cardboard box here. I just opened up my cereal box um, and I have this on the back. Um, I know I sent most of you home with tracing paper, um, I mean transfer paper, graphite paper. If you don't have graphite paper, um, you can just take some soft graphite um, and rub on the back of some newsprint uh, and I'm going to use this for transferring. Then graphite goes this side down. Oh, my. And I'm going to trace out my registration marks here because I want to make sure that I cut my plates all to the same size so we have good registration. And I could have transferred this onto some tracing paper, uh, which I know most of you went home with some tracing paper. But again, I'm trying to keep this as minimum as possible. So it's a little light, but it's there. I can see it. Let me pull it up closer you can't see it all right so I'm gonna do this three times and we'll come back and see what it looks like all right folks and I'm back as you can see I have my three cardboard plates now um, and my sketch and I make sure they're very accurate they all are roughly the same size to each other. I think it might be off maybe a millimeter or two, but that's close enough. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use all my textures and I'm going to use all my surfaces and I'm going to build this up uh, so that the areas that I want to frittage, again, print, frittage, I'm going to raise them higher. So um, if I want the gray um, base in the, in the cinder block here to rise up, I'm going to build up this area here and leave everything else flat. Um, and so on and so forth for the other plates uh, until I have three sets of information. All right. All right, so I think I'm going to start um, with this background texture here. It was like the sign of a building, and I really like the way that this ridging works. So I'm going to work on, you know, shaping this up to kind of match the form of the land there. I'm going to mark this here and there. My straight edge. I'm going to cut that off. And of course you you're, you don't have to stick to 
I know, straight. It's pretty good. All right, folks, I'm back. So I made another little piece here that's going to, just out of some cardboard, that's going to be rising up uh, that form. Um, I used some sandpaper here to hopefully hold some more texture. And I'm also curious to see how this netting is going to work. Uh, and I'm just going to glue that again right down in top there. And again, the reason why I did a, a separate piece of uh, cardboard is now I've, I've risen this up from the surface so that I should be able to capture that texture, that height change. All right, so now we're gonna work on our other plate. Um, and this is going to be for sort of this background area there, which is, you know, kind of like dirt and whatnot. Uh, I'm going to be using tin foil for this. And if I crinkle this up, you know, we get this really nice sort of irregular texture in there. And I'm going to use that um, cutting up into different pieces. I'm just going to glue it right down into those, those spaces that I want to be able to print.
so one thing I forgot to mention, folks, is I'm just cleaning up the back of my collagraph plate here so that my registration stays nice and tight. Alright, so I'm going to move on to making my third plate, and I've decided to use the hot glue as sort of a drawing technique. You can see here I'm just using the hot glue of making raised lines. Um, I mean, I could obviously be doing this with tape, or I could be gluing down string, but I really like sort of the irregularness of the hot glue. If you find you get too much irregularity, you can use some of that sandpaper after it's dried and sand it down so you have a more even surface. Um, I've done the outline of the brick and I'm just doing some background stuff. Looks pretty good. All right. All right, so I've got some of this foam glue that I showed earlier in the adhesive section. Um, this glue is really, really thick, almost like modeling paste. If you have modeling paste, that stuff is awesome for making collar graphs too. And I'm just spreading it out here, and I'm going to, you know, use my finger, work it out a little bit. Um, I'm going to take a toothpick here at certain points and just, you know, give it some texture there. Um, I'm not quite sure how this is going to hold, but again, if I don't like anything, I can always take that sandpaper back in and you know, smooth it down or get rid of it altogether even. You know, it's just cardboard, glue. Um, I can make as many changes as I need to in this plate. All right, folks, so I've got my three plates here, uh, three different sets of information. Um, so I'm going to let these dry and make sure they're all cured and whatnot, and then we're going to try frottaging them um, in the next video. Uh, one thing to remember that frottage is right reading, so make sure that you're making your image in the orientation that you want it to be. All right. Thanks for checking this out.